Police arrest a Madison County teacher they say had sex with a teenage student. What we've learned about the investigation. One of four people charged in a 2014 shooting death at a Lexington Park is expected to plead guilty tomorrow. What the victim's mother told us about the new development. Sit down. Sit down. Who got that reaction from presidential candidate Donald Trump during a heated news conference? Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. Good evening. Tonight we're learning new details about a sexual abuse case against a Madison County high school teacher. Police say that she had sex with a 16-year-old student. Berea police arrested 24-year-old Brandy Whitaker this afternoon. She teaches biology at Madison Southern High School. Garrett Weimer talked to Berea police tonight. He's tracking the investigation in our top story at 11. Police say an anonymous tip to social services brought investigators here to Madison Southern High School on Tuesday. A few hours later, Brandy Whitaker was in jail. She faces charges of sexual abuse, rape, and sodomy. You're talking about an adult and a child, you know, and she has a position of authority over this child. You know, she's his teacher. So, you know, obviously anything like this we take very seriously. Police say Whitaker admitted to having sexual contact with the teen on two separate occasions. Police say the two incidents happened when school was out in June and July, once at Ms. Whitaker's home and once at a park. We're told neither incident happened here at the high school. According to her website, Whitaker went to Berea College and started teaching at Madison Southern last year. In a statement, Madison County School says the school district is cooperating with police and also conducting its own internal investigation of the charges. In the meantime, Whitaker has been suspended with pay. It's a sad situation really for everybody involved. Uh, you know, like I said, it's unfortunate, but these things do happen sometimes. In Berea, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Police say they do have more following up to do, but they have no reason to believe there are other victims. Whitaker declined our request for an interview from jail. New tonight, search crews in Laurel County have found the body of a hunter who had been reported missing. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office says 69-year-old Stanley Pearson of Berea and a friend were squirrel hunting off Martin Road south of London this morning. Deputies say the two men split up to hunt. They believe Pearson accidentally fell down a steep bank while trying to find a squirrel he had shot. They say Pearson died in the fall. His friend reported him missing after Pearson didn't come out of the woods. Deputies say a canine unit found his body just after 6.30 tonight. Tomorrow, a 17-year-old is expected to plead guilty in connection to the shooting death of a Lexington man. Police say the victim, 21-year-old Antonio Franklin, was caught in the crossfire of a gun battle in Duncan Park last year. New at 11 tonight, Monique Blair talks to Franklin's mother. She says she thinks she could forgive the teenager. It says years from now, no one may remember who I was and what I've done. But what matters is that I was important in the life of a child. In April 2014, Anita Franklin's 21 year old son, Antonio, was an innocent bystander when he was shot in Duncan Park. He later died. I'm sad today. Uh, it's almost the way I felt when I got the news. On Wednesday afternoon, Franklin will face one of the four young men charged in connection to Antonio's murder. He may have been the, the very reason my son is not here today. Damian Sanders was only 16 years old when he was arrested and charged with manslaughter. Tomorrow he is expected to make a plea to a Fayette County judge. I do know tomorrow that he will be accountable for his portion of um, that whole entire sad situation. Franklin says if Sanders is remorseful for his actions, she will forgive him. Can I forgive Damian Sanders? I did accept a letter from him um, and just heartfelt. What I think about is when people own up to their faults, when you can say, I, I messed up, when I see that difference, that change, sure I can. On Wednesday, Franklin says she will ask Sanders one question. What are you going to do after this? I don't want to hear a script. I want you to tell me from your heart. In Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. Now, three other men were charged in the murder of Antonio Franklin. They are expected to face a judge in September. New tonight, we have learned a retired Lexington Fire Department captain was killed in a motorcycle crash in Barron County. 
The department says Max Helmuller died after the crash this morning on Highway 68 near Glasgow. Investigators say he was trying to pass a construction grader on his motorcycle when the grader turned in front of him. They say the motorcycle hit the side of the grader, throwing Helmuller onto the road. Investigators say he later died at a hospital. The evening rush hour was tricky for drivers along Manowar Boulevard in Lexington tonight. Firefighters say a crane leaked hydraulic fluid between Polo Club Boulevard and Maple Leaf Drive. While crews were cleaning that up, a Lexington police cruiser was involved in an accident at Manowar and Sir Barton. No injuries were reported, but traffic was tied up for a few hours in that area. It's expected to be another cooler than normal night, and you may wake up to some fog around. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey joins us for an early look at a, uh, can I say a chilly forecast? Uh, yes, you can. That is indeed a, a little chill that is in the air across the bluegrass state really over the past several days. It's going to stick around for several more days. You got to keep in mind, it is still August. Those normal temperatures for highs are middle 80s and normal lows around 65 degrees. Nowhere near that. Let's get into it. Here is uh, what we're seeing on Defender. Big area of low pressure to our north. We've got cool Canadian high pressure to our northwest. We're sandwiched in between, so you get a lot of cool and chilly temperatures. Get out in the open countryside already down into the upper 50s. Now 57 here in Fort Knox. Look at Monticello, Wayne County, Southern Kentucky, 56 degrees. Areas that are still getting in with a little bit of high cloud cover are at 60 or a little better as of now, but all the numbers will continue to drop as we go through the overnight. Look at what we wake up to. High 40s, to low 50s to begin your day. How about your lunchtime temperature tomorrow? Around noon, hey, we're still struggling to get out of the 60s into eastern Kentucky. Tomorrow afternoon, a lot of middle 70s will come your way. And then tomorrow night, hey, it's game on for another cool night across central and eastern Kentucky. Touch of fog overnight in addition to the cool down. But the fall weather, guys, it's going to continue for several more days. Then we kind of change it up at least just a little bit heading into the weekend. I'll let you know what I mean by that when I come back with an updated hour by hour forecast here in a few minutes. Frightening moments at a West Virginia high school today. Police say a 14 year old student held a classroom at gunpoint. Barbara County, West Virginia school leaders say 29 students and a teacher were held hostage this afternoon inside Philip Barber High School. Police evacuated the school. They say the student eventually let the group go and he surrendered. No one was injured. Police say the student was taken to a hospital for evaluation. Prosecutors say they will pursue charges against him. New tonight, a Donald Trump news conference became heated in Iowa. The Republican presidential candidate got into an argument with Jorge Ramos, an anchor from the Hispanic television network Univision. During the news conference, Ramos jumped up and began asking questions about immigration. Uh, next, yeah, please. Excuse me, sit down. You weren't called. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Go ahead. No, you don't. You haven't been called. Go back to Univision. Go ahead. You cannot deport 11 million. Go ahead. Well, at that point, security removed Ramos from the room, but he was later readmitted to the news conference. Trump has proposed ending birthright citizenship, a constitutionally protected right that declares children born in the U.S. are automatically citizens. New tonight, state police say human remains found in Wolf County have been identified as those of a missing man from northern Kentucky. 50-year-old George Niece of Erlanger disappeared last Wednesday. Search crews say they found his remains last night near a waterfall off Russell Drive in Campton. Investigators believe Niece accidentally fell 40 feet to his death. Family members say he was in the area because he was helping with funeral arrangements for his nephew. Tonight, Franklin County school leaders are looking for some new school bus drivers. They say right now they do not have enough drivers. School leaders say some buses are running up to half an hour late because of the driver shortage. The drivers they have are adding stops, which would normally not be on their route. And school leaders say they need to hire 13 new drivers, but they're having trouble finding anyone interested in the job. Honestly, you see the, on the on TV and stuff a lot of times where accidents have happened, kids have gotten hurt, and that that kind of has driven. Uh, the applicant pulled down some. The school district is offering to help new bus drivers find more working hours to make it as close to an eight hour day as possible. The district expects six new drivers to be qualified soon. 
New tonight, a Wayne County road has reopened nearly three weeks after a sinkhole shut it down. State road crews have been making repairs to Main Street just outside of downtown Monticello. Earlier this month, they say heavy rain caused a 30 feet deep sinkhole to open up. But tonight, state road crews said all repair work to Main Street has been finished and all lanes are safe for traffic once again. Crews say they'll need a few more weeks to finish repairs to nearby sidewalks. So Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. New tonight, a national organization is calling for some artwork showing Jesus Christ to be removed from the Breathitt County Courthouse. The artwork shows a man kneeling before Jesus with the caption, In your place, what would Jesus do? The Freedom from Religion Foundation says the organization has sent multiple letters to Breathitt County leaders over the last few years asking it to be removed, but the organization says the letters have not been answered. To put this at the seat of county government is really. Uh, chilling. This sends this message that you better pretend to be a Christian if you want to get any service or justice around here. The organization says the artwork violates the First Amendment of the Constitution. Breathitt County Judge Executive John Lester Smith says he doesn't want to comment until he talks to the county attorney. Tonight, Irvin police are warning people about a phone scam. They say someone is calling people in Irvin, claiming to be an Irvin police officer, and saying they have an, a warrant for an arrest. Police say this is just a scam. They say they will never call people about warrants or ask for any personal information. They say a similar scam was reported in Madison County a few weeks ago. Now in Lancaster, police have a warning about a bogus beggar. They say this man approaches people either claiming he needs money to help his sick father or he needs gas money to drive to his father's funeral. The Lancaster police say it's just a scam and 10 people have lost money because of it. One of the victims says it's frustrating. Every dime that he borrowed, he should have to work and pay it back. And he should have pulled back six months and you're in jail. Lancaster police say they know who the bogus beggar is, but they're not releasing his name until they have an arrest warrant. They say he's facing a misdemeanor charge. Tonight, one of the Americans who helped stop a terror attack in France has returned to the U.S. Anthony Sadler arrived in California with his parents tonight. A parade for Sadler is being planned for the coming weeks in the Sacramento area where Sadler grew up. Investigators say he and his friends, Spencer Stone and Alex Scarlatos, stopped an armed terror suspect on a train bound for Paris last week. A fourth American who also helped is still in the hospital recovering from a gunshot wound. New tonight, prosecutors are considering whether to file charges against Caitlyn Jenner for a deadly crash in California. The Los Angeles County District Attorney said the case was presented today, but prosecutors say they do not have a timetable for deciding whether to file charges. Jenner's SUV slammed into two cars in February, killing one of the other drivers. Today, more than 400 Whitley County students received a new pair of shoes thanks to some generous people. It's part of the Shoes for Souls program at the University of the Cumberlands. Athletes at the university handed out the shoes to children. Program organizers say it's a way for the university community to give back. Smiles on the kids' faces. I mean, every single one of these kids, you can just look around right now and see how happy they are and how this is their only opportunity to really hang out with athletes. Organizers say all of the donations and fundraising for the program came from people living near the university. What a wonderful thing they did there today. Yeah, and a great way for them to start their mm -hmm. school year. Excellent. Oh, that's great. Brian's up next.